So every once in a while, companies will send me products that they'd like to have me test. And today it's my pleasure to test some shielding bags from a company called Faraday Defense. Now they sent me several different ones. So the first one I'm gonna test is a product called their Nest Z bag. And I'll put the information down on the screen. And it looks very similar to the dry shield bags that I've recommended for years. The difference being that it has a zip top at the top. Um, of course, that's really nice and convenient because it makes it easy to take things in and out. You don't have to fold the lip over and tape it. Um, the question will be uh, to see how well it works compared to the dry shield bags. All right, so we'll check that. The next product they sent me was the Faraday NX and NX3 bags. Now, they both look very similar. They're this uh, metalized uh, cloth fabric. They have a Velcro at the top that you can seal up the bags. They're very reusable for sure. Um, this shielding material uh, works very well. I've tested it before and we'll see how that works as a bag. Now, the difference is that the NX bag is a single layer bag and the NX3 is a double layer bag. And you can tell right away when you feel it that it's heavier uh, because it has two layers throughout. So we'll test them and see how they do. My guess is both will do very well, all right? I've tested this material before, as I said, and it's a, it's a very good material. Next, I've got their, their dry sack, which is a, a backpack, very much like a dry sack you might take on like a boat, where inside is the shielding material and then it, it folds over and clips shut um, just like other dry sacks do. And it looks like a very good high quality product. Um, so it could be really useful, a backpack style Faraday cage that you could stick your stuff in. So we'll test that as well. They also sent me a, um, a pouch. This one's called the jacket. Now they have several different ones. They're, they're similar to this Cordura style material. Uh, inside is the shielding uh, fabric. And then they, they fold over, they have a Velcro top that seals. Um, that folds over and seals as such. These would be great for storing things like laptops and iPads, sort of small electronic devices that you'd want to put in there. Obviously, these are meant to last a very long time, uh, very high quality products. And then finally, they sent me uh, what they call a large tower case. It's kind of like a duffel bag, except it's vertical. Um, and it's, it's really big. You can see inside here the shielding material. Uh, it's a really big product. These are great for storing things like small generators, inverters, things like that. So really nice for storing larger items, all right? So we'll test that as well. So the test is pretty straightforward. What I do is I take a signal generator, I connect it up to an amplifier, and then connect that up to an antenna. All that's behind the camera right now. And then on the receive side, I use a spectrum analyzer to receive the signal that I transmit. So first I start off by taking what's called an open air measurement. I just put the spectrum analyzer on the chair here, I turn everything on, I broadcast a signal, and I get a value of what that signal level is. And then I repeat that experiment over and over where I take the spectrum analyzer and I put it inside of one of the bags, turn everything back on, see what the signal level is inside the bag. By comparing those two signal levels, the open air measurement and the value I measure inside the bag, I can tell what the shielding of the bag is, all right? And that'll tell us how well it shields. Now to do it right, I should really test a number of different frequencies, but that would take a long time and make a very long video. Instead, I'm going to pick one frequency that I think is representative of an EMP, and that's going to be 500 megahertz today. So I'm going to take 500 megahertz, broadcast that one single frequency, and measure the shielding effectiveness of these bags at that frequency. That gives you a pretty good idea of how well they would shield against an EMP. So our first measurement is going to be our open air measurement. This is just where we place the spectrum analyzer on a chair in the open air, no shielding material around it. I've turned on the, the generator. And if you zoom in here, you can see that the peak signal level is about 1 dBm. That's the top of that center peak there. And the noise is down at about minus 80 dBm. So we have a dynamic range of about 80 dB, meaning we can measure shielding effectiveness up to about 80 dB of shielding. Anything above that and the signal will drop so small we won't be able to see it. All right, so let's go through the bags one at a time and see what the shielding is of each of the products. So the first test we're going to run is on the Faraday Defense Nest Z bag. Now these are very similar to the dry shield bags that I've recommended for a long time. The primary difference is that they have a zip top, which obviously makes them very convenient. All right, let's see how well they perform in terms of shielding. I'll go ahead and turn on the signal generator. We'll let the energy accumulate here for a few seconds, and then I'll turn it back off. All right, so let's go ahead and open up the bag now and see what level we have. Now, I set the spectrum analyzer to capture the peak level, so it'll show what the highest level we received is during the test. All 
All right, so let's zoom in here. So you can see the little pulse coming up out of the noise. It's much smaller than before. Okay, so it's at minus 51 dBm. Now remember, when we first started, we had a signal level of positive one dBm. So we dropped down by 52 dB, which is really exceptional, all right? So that's right at the level of what the dry shield bags provide when you fold over the lips, all right? So it provides, a, these Nest Z bags provide about 50 dB of shielding at 500 megahertz, which is, again, is really exceptional, especially given the convenience of the zip top. All right, let's go on to the next bag. All right, the next bag we're gonna test is the Faraday Defense NX bag. So we'll go ahead and turn on the generator. We'll let it accumulate here for just a second. I'll turn it back off. And let's see what the maximum level is inside the bag. Now these, this type of shielding material does a very good job, so I don't expect to see much signal here. Yeah, it's quite reduced. So if we zoom in here, you can see there's a tiny peak there still left, and it looks like it's down about to about minus 64 dBm. So we got about uh, 65 dB of shielding out of the bag, all right, 65 dB, which is great, obviously. Uh, 60 dB represents 99.9% .9 of the field reduced, okay? So excellent shielding from the NX bag. So the next bag we're gonna test is the Faraday Defense NX3 bag. Now this is a double layer bag, so if the previous bag provided almost 70 dB of shielding, we're expecting that this one will provide much more than even 80, and so we won't see any signal come through the bag at all, at least that's my expectation. I'll go ahead and turn on the generator. We'll let the energy accumulate a minute, and we'll turn it back off, and we'll see what level we have. All right, so if we zoom in here, you can see that there is no signal coming up out of the noise floor, all right? So again, our dynamic range was about 80 dB. So that means that the NX3 bag provides at least 80 dB of shielding. Could be more than that, could be 100 dB. Um, we really have no way of measuring that with this particular set of test equipment. So we just know that it's greater than 80 dB, which again means that it's greater than 99.99% of the field being reduced by the bag. Next, we're going to test a bag called the Jacket, which is like a Cordura style bag. Very useful for storing laptops and things like that. Uh, we'll see how it does. All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the generator. Let the energy accumulate there. We'll turn it back off. And we'll see what we get. All right. These are really nice, rugged bags. All right. So if you zoom in, again, it looks like the signal level is down into the noise floor. All right, so that bag, the jacket, also provided uh, at least 80 dB of shielding. All right, very, very good quality shielding, obviously. All right, let's go on to the next one. Next, we're gonna test their dry sack. Uh, really neat little product here. Let's go ahead and turn on the generator. Give it just a few seconds, turn it back off, and let's see what we get. Now these bags that, that roll up the tops like this, whether they Velcro or not, they do a really good job of shielding, uh, preventing any kind of leakage to the top of the bag, all right? So once again, the signal is uh, right down into the noise floor. So our conclusion would be that the dry sack provides at least 80 dB of shielding, which again is outstanding level of protection. And finally, we're gonna test their tower bag. This is a large tower bag. Again, it'd be really nice for storing uh, large computers or maybe inverters or a small generator, that sort of thing. So I'll go ahead and turn on the signal generator. The energy collect again, turn it back off and we'll open it up, all right? Again, this one seals with a, a roll around top here that Velcros down. All right, 
we'll zoom in here and see what we get. And again, there's no signal above the noise floor. So the tower bag also provides at least 80 dB of shielding. Okay, so really outstanding products. Uh, I've got a lot of good data here today from the tests. Um, let's go ahead and turn on the signal generator just to show that the system is still functioning and that we didn't accidentally mess something up here. You should see the signal. Yeah, so the signal rises back up there uh, just like it did before. All right, so that's great. So everything was done properly. We didn't have any mistakes in the test. So the results of today's test were that the bags all performed exceptionally well. The, uh, the Nest Z bag, which is the one with the zip top, was really pretty neat because it provided about 50 dB of shielding, which is as good as the dry shield bags that I've been recommending for a long time. Um, and it has the convenience, obviously, of the zip top, which is great. They're the first zip top bags, by the way, that I've tested that had really good shielding like that. And then you had the, uh, the NX bag, which provided uh, great shielding, almost 70 dB of shielding. Uh, then the, the multi-layer NX3 bag, which provided uh, 80 dB or more of shielding, as did the, the dry sack and the tower uh, and the jacket. They all provided 80 dB or more. All right, so really great quality products um, from Faraday Defense. The products from Faraday Defense that we tested today perform so well that they're going to be offered at DisasterPrepare.com. I'll put a link on the screen if you want to go and get some of them. So they were pretty interesting. The, uh, the Nest Z bags are very similar to the dry shield bags. I think these could really replace the dry shield bags, to be honest. They're more convenient to use, um, and they seem like they're quite durable, heavy-duty bags. And again, they provided about 50 dB of shielding, which is really outstanding. Um, the rest of the products are also equally good. They all provided excellent shielding. Um, very high quality products, so it makes sense to offer them at DisasterPrepare.com for customers who might have a need for such products.